What's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the best settings here in Modern Warfare 2 and I think every player should be using these. I guarantee if you use these, you're going to see improvement in gameplay, KD improvement, and just everything in general. So if you guys are new and find this video to help, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell. Thank you guys for watching and let's hop right into it. Alright, so we're going to start off with our input device, which we have controller. I am a controller player. I play with a regular PlayStation 4 controller with the PlayStation back button attachment. It kind of helps you like it's a scuff. I have paddles. My right one is to jump. Left one is to slide and crouch. In the comments, if you want to let me know what you play on, an Xbox, PlayStation controller, or a scuff, Battle Beaver, just let me know in the comments. I'm kind of curious on what you guys play on. Anyways, we're going to go to the input here. We have a default. I do not change a lot of my settings. They're kind of just all the same, but we have tweaked a little bit of them, which are the most important ones. So the button layout, we have a default. Bumper ping, we have off. The L1, R2, L2, R2, one thing, we have off. We don't need to flip them. Stick layout preset is default. We have the controller vibration off. Personally, me, I think this is a very important one just because vibration does throw off your aim. Hand eye coordination is off, and I think you should have it off. Personally, me, I know people like to play with vibration, so it's kind of how you prefer or what's your preference here, but off is for me. Now, the most important things, we have the aiming and gameplay settings. Vertical and horizontal sensitivity, you want to have it 9-9. It's in the between the slow and fast. It's kind of in the middle. Really sweet spot. Really nice. With the ADS sensitivity multiplier being the most important at point eight. This is what I like to use. Aim and down sights. There's two settings. You have your aim, out of aim and out of sights and aim and down sights. Which at point eight, your aim and down sights, a little bit slower. It's going to help you track your targets a little bit easier. So I have this on. Sensitivity multiplier. We have it all the same. I do not change anything. A lot of my settings are the same as when the game came out or if there's any settings they have added. We do have this off and we have it on all the same. We don't need to use anything. Vertical aim axis, standard. Everything is not changed, nothing. I don't have anything changed here. You don't need to change anything. Gameplay, we have the aim down sight behavior, hold. I don't. I know I'm sure there's a few people that use toggle. I know there's a lot of older games that people play that have toggle and they prefer that. So people do use toggle, but me personally, hold is a lot better. Change zoom shared input. We have this at sprint, tactical sprint, and focus. I do not change anything, so you don't need to. Automatic sprint. I have automatic tax sprint. Now, for me, this can be a problem for a lot of people. If you tax sprint, getting into a gunfight, you're going to lose. I'm going to tell you that right now. You, you have a different aim down sight speed from sprint to a tactical sprint. Your sprint's going to have a faster aim down sight speed compared to your tackle, at tactical sprint. So I'm going to tell you this, just a little note. If you are going to run around corners and everything, be ready. You do not want to attack sprint around corners unless you're going to bunny hop someone or, you know, just kind of like juke them out in a way. Tactical sprint helps me out be more aggressive. So if you want to have this on, you can. But automatic sprint is a good one as well. Or you can have off if you want to. But tactical sprint is, in a way, going to help you be more aggressive. And also, there is like an unlimited attack sprint method. You task sprint, you stop, you melee, you go back to your attack sprint. So you can have this on if you want. It does help me out being more aggressive. Equipment behavior, we have hold. Weapon mount activation, we have ADS plus melee. Interact reload behavior, you can have this on tap to reload. You can have on tap to react, interact, anything that like that. And then we have the armor plate behavior, which is not in multiplayer yet. I'm sure we'll get some ballistic vest or something like that soon, but I do have it on ply all. Now, getting into our advance, which I think is a really important thing as well, we have our target aim assist. You want to have it on if you're a controller player. You want to have aim assist on. If you play without off, you're a dog, you're a king, you're better than me. I have to have aim assist on. I will say that. Aim assist type, Black Ops. It is the best one. Really nice, traditional, aim slow down near target used in Black Ops games. Really nice. You can go with default if you're just more of like a default player, if you like that. But I'm telling you, Black Ops is the best aim assist. I believe they actually nerfed it as well a little bit in the Season 1 update, or it was the Season 1 Reloaded update. I'm not really sure. Uh, third person, I have on assist. I don't change anything like that. I don't really do third person. If you guys want to see some third person gameplay on the channel, just let me know. I can put them in some class of the videos or just like kind of do like a special gameplay itself. Just let me know. But we have the gyro behavior. I have off. You do not. With this, it's really new, the gyro aiming. You aim with your controller. Uh, you want to have it off. Don't want to have this on because it will throw your aim off. If you're like playing, you know, you're moving like this, it's going to move. Your controller will move your aim. So you want to have this off. 
So make sure to have it all if you don't need that. We don't really need to go in depth with that. Also, next important thing, aim response curve type. We have it dynamic. Now, I know a lot of people have actually done a poll on my community tab. I asked, like, what do you guys play on? Standard, linear, dynamic. 80% was dynamic. So have this on. Every COD Pro player has this on. And since, like, the whole aim response curve type setting has been in Call of Duty, I've always went by dynamic being the best. It just helps you with, like, it just has a faster, like, aim control rate. And it just really helps. I think it's better than everything else right here. ADSMT multiplier focus. I have it one. I don't really change anything here. ADS sensitivity transition timing. Instant. Don't need to change anything. Custom sensitivity per zoom. I have off. You don't really need that. Also, the next important thing. We have dead input. Input dead zone. Stick left input. We're going to have at five. My right stick, since my controller was broken, if you guys remember in a couple videos, I was talking about my aim being like a little bad, so I do how to change my input dead zone. You want to have it 5 as well. Don't change anything on the left stick max, and also your left trigger and right trigger, you want to have at 0. You can literally, your controller is going to be so sensitive now, you can literally blow on your controller and it will aim and shoot. It's that sensitive. So you want to have these on zero zero. It's going to make it more sensitive. So your controller, you're going to have a better hand-eye coordination. It's going to be a lot faster now because you can barely tap your controller button and it'll fire. So it does definitely help. Movement behaviors. I don't change anything here besides one thing, which is the automatic airborne mantle. You don't want to use that. I think it kills me a lot in like gunfights. And basically, you just want to have everything off. Like auto move forward, you want to have off. Unless you, you know, you have to use like auto move forward. You have your auto, a tactical sprint behavior, double tap, your ground mantle. I do have on automatic airborne off air, uh, air automatic ground mantle off. You don't want to have that on invert slide dive behavior, standard plunging underwater movement parachute. I don't play Warzone. I'm thinking about making like a second channel for Warzone content only, but I do have off. Spring door bash is on. I think this is a really helpful thing to use in, you know, juking people out and everything. So I do have on. And then we have the ledge hanging. I can, I wish I could turn this off. I think it's really annoying to have on. But mantle only, I don't change anything like that. And also I don't change anything all down here. So if you want to copy these down, they should be the same as already because I do not change anything. But let's go ahead and get into our next settings. Now we're going to go to our view, which I think is very important as well when it comes to being a console player. If it comes to being a you know person playing on PC or anything like that. This is what you're going to want to use. Field of view 120. It's going to make it look wider. It, and a lot of people like before like they added like the FOV thing to like console everybody asked me how am I moving so fast it's really just a placebo effect it's just 120 FOV it just makes you look like you're on rollerblades running around the whole map just on rollerblades and also you want your ADS field of view to be unaffected you can kind of see a difference between independent and also you can see affected now I know I used to say this uh, uh, people used to tell me this a lot back in like a couple years ago I think in like Marvel Fair 19 a lot of pros, if you were a submachine gun player, you would use independent. And if you're an assault rifle player, you would use affected. I think I've heard that. I don't know exactly if that's true or not. But if you're using like an SMG, being more aggressive up close, you can use independent. But also affected is just really nice. You can see everything as you guys see here in the pictures right underneath me. Independent's on the left, affected's on the right. You can kind of see the difference here. And it's actually kind of crazy. Now, for the weapon field of view, I have on wide. It actually does help out a little bit. You see more, a little bit more, as you guys see here. Uh, the left and right one is narrow, and then the right one is wide. Really nice. Field of view for the vehicles and for the uh, third person, I have at 90 maxed, and I don't change anything on vehicles because I do not use vehicles at all. And then the camera, this is important, I think. I think this is important if you're a person that moves fast and always on the move camera you want to put them at less than 50 for third person and first person as well and then the third person ads transition i don't change anything on this as well and um, but also i do want to add on to like the computer if you're on a computer and the quality and everything i think personally you should have everything on low when it comes to playing on a computer yes you can make it ultra make the game look good but i think personally if you're you know, if your game's running smooth and everything like that, I think you're going to perform a lot better. As you guys see, I'm on custom, and I literally have everything on 
very low off or anything like that. I just feel like personally, I perform a lot better when my computer is just running a lot better. So I have these things on. And then display, I don't really have anything on. Uh, you know, like high end graphics card, we have the 3060, uh, dynamic resolution, we have off, aspect ratios off, vSync gameplays off, vSync menus off, custom frame rate, I have mine at 110. I record, stream, and you know, you just play on one computer. So I don't have my computer going absolutely crazy. So 110 is pretty fair for me. And then everything else, you don't really need to change besides the display gamma, which I have mine at 2.2. I don't really need to change anything. But really guys, I think that's really it for all the settings that you really need to know. Besides like interface, if you want to, you can go to color customization, change these. I do have Trinitopia on, kind of just change the colors a little bit. And that's really it. I mean, there's really nothing too special to run besides, you know, make sure your mini map is square and also make sure like, I don't know, it's just all preference in my opinion. It's just really all preference. It's like everything else is just preference really. Like all of these, like if you want to have tips on, you can have off, you can have the network game alerts. I think this is important. And then all that, I just think it's just all preference really. I, I don't really... There's really nothing else to go over besides, you know, the display and the controller settings are really important. But I do hope these setting videos does help. Let me know in the comment section again what kind of controller you play on. If this video does help, also let me know in the comment section. But if you guys are new and if this video did help, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel with that bell on as always so you don't miss any more Monfrey 2 content. Thank you guys for watching. You guys stay safe and I'll see you on the next one.